Hello there everyone and welcome back to the TNO, the Brave New World with the Code Talker update um, in which we're playing Central Siberian Federation, the revival of Norilsk. With the age of warlordism slowly coming to an end in Central Siberia, with the resources of the region from the air control, it's time for us to have moved north to finally reconnect the resource-rich areas of Norilsk to the rest of our nascent state. Formerly infamous for its expansive use of forced labor during the days of the Soviet Union, since its collapse, the region slowly fell into disrepair, finally being lost when the Siberian War led to the collapse of the Soviet rump state, formed out of the Second World War. Now we have a chance to reclaim these territories back for our people, bringing its bountiful riches back into the Russian hands. Let us not repeat the mistakes of the past. Beautiful. Now we look taller. The coming storm. And the frenzy push to reunify Siberia and restore its rightful dignity. A whisper has grown as the light has gained purchase, so too has a shadow festering upon the inherently cruelty in her actions. It has waited for a moment to strike, today emerge from the dark, boldly declaring, I, am, I was, I am, I will be. The workers across central Siberia, Siberian industrial zones begin massive coordinated general strike, citing continually poor conditions, unfulfilled promises, and unrepented cruelty by bosses. It appears the drive to return civilization to the Russian waste has become with many drawbacks, as the lofty dream of a united Russia becomes less alluring when one cannot feed his family or keep all his limbs intact. Additionally, with the return of normalcy to the region, the worker himself has to seem to have become less valuable, simply a pawn towards the eventual goal. Already work has gone around to a halt, and abandons are being made, and old scores are being settled. While some of our government may be sympathetic to the cause of the strikers, it is undeniable that we cannot tolerate a crippled economy, especially considering the always precarious position of Russia. The strikers are numerous and militant. Unless we can come to some kind of deal and show our workers some tangible piece of property we, or prosperity we promise, we must brace for the coming storm. Harrowing. Oh boy, that's not good. I'm not touching that. Reconnect the roads. The area surrounding the region's mineral deposits are in tatters. A decade of neglect has left the roads in complete disrepair, and most of the facilities they used to lead are too derelict and at best, and utterly dilapidated at worst. Before we can bring a machinery to properly restore these, we've made plans to send a force of military engineers to restore the main road links to working conditions once more. Apologies, I yawn there. Nice, 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 nice. We got a lot of political power we need to spend. Um, I should have done this one earlier, not collapse that. But the coming storm, you know what? We're gonna actually click on this. You know, let's do, let's just read this one first, and then we'll click on it so we can get through it as fast as possible. At last, Central Siberia has been unified under authority, with the rivals in the region vanquished and their loyal scattered, forced into hiding or exile. However, for the continued success of our federation, much work remains to be done. First, there's a matter of consolidating our gains by integrating the new territories more closely and securing our boundaries. Then we must consider how to stabilize a rule and satisfy the people in hopes of restoring the law, order, and stability that is so desperately needed. Many problems remain, but beyond them lies a bright future for the federation. I was going to talk about appointing new governors. Although the practice of appointing military governors of freshly conquered territories has served us very well, it was always intended to be a temporary measure due to the fragile nature of the situation we were in. Now that we're in a more secure position, it's finally to make good on a promise to remove them and appoint new ones in their place to aid the integration into the Federation of the New Lands, as well as the restoration of stability and, and reduction of popular unrest. Smashing barricades. The diesel engine of a tank... Uh, a uh, wine fierce as you race against makeshift barricade, the few workers, still on top and running in all directions. <clears throat> as the vehicles charge down the city streets, dozens of well-placed shots from those behind the machine, preventing any sort of reaction. With a loud crash and hailstorm and scattered debris, the armored vehicles smashed through the barricade soon followed by the men of the all Siberian army. Rivals of machine guns spat fire in all directions, scattering those who remained. A battle of chaos and death, the routine that Corporal Ivanov was all too familiar with. Several, body, several dozen bodies, already marked uh, the dust and rubble, almost certain to be joined by more as the rubble's flood and disarray. For all their talk, factory workers and technicians were no match for professional soldiers, and the fragment of Costin's naive rebellion was no different. Crush the rabble. So now, I want to hire important instructors, but I want to reduce poverty as much as possible first. Um, increase growth, help poverty increase inflation. That'd probably be the one we want to do. Um, what else do we have around here? Not, I'm not, a, a lot of these are just very good. Oh, this expand state welfare programs. It's also very good. Slowly improve. It has increased the GDP by 5%, though. 5%. Ooh. But we're going to go with this one anyways, because it does increase growth. It increases inflation a little bit, too. But And that gives you a better effect on poverty than anything else. Treaty Beijing. With the negotiations not concluded, the time has come to sign the Treaty of Beijing. The peaceful means... Oh. Uh, we've taken the last Barrow Bizarre Oblast from the signing of the treaty. Let's see its integration into blank. Uh, although there are many in our government that are disappointed by the results, we're prepared to move ahead with the treaty and welcome our Russian brothers and sisters back into the glorious union. It's better than nothing. Uh, that's fired a bit too early. Ivan Tarov. Congo immigration. Um, I know that there was an update for this to help with bugs and whatnot. Ooh, you know shifts over here. Uh... 
the eye wall, the severity of the general strike has expanded in entirely new dimensions, following a lack of progress towards any kind of resolution, and continuous violence where workers have taken up arms. Reading weapons, stockpiles, looting old cellars, and outright stealings become widespread as arms and ammo began to be passed among militants. Already workers are organizing themselves into general defense committees. It's an extremely dangerous situation, and the specter of uprising hangs in the air. We must tread more carefully than we ever have before, while at the same time moving as quickly as possible to secure ourselves. If we do not act, this could be the end of all things. And that's where they're going to rebel. And that's why we've not uh, hurt uh, our division in composition. Um, and we do have a cup of coffee to keep in this morning, too. Mm, this is fired way too early. Vestiges of revolt. We're going to keep going down this way, maybe. Um, just because we want to reduce the effects of administrative strain. Even though I do want to rush this one as fast as possible, we do have to wait. The vestiges of revolt. Oh, no. We have to do bread games first. <coughs> Above all else, everyday people desire just two things, bread to feed themselves with, and games to which they entertain them. So long as these are provided and made easily accessible, there will be little cause for unhappiness and unrest among the people, and therefore very little room for extremist organizations to grow and gain strength. While well, some sacrifice must be made to achieve this, that are more than worth the state, the current and future stability of our state. Cause for uprising, comrades. Unlike the a-holes that run Siberia, I will not lie to you, the truth is so simple, so simple I don't need any fancy language to explain it to you. There is, it's the truth that any Russian child knows. There's something wrong with those that lead. You all know the men I'm talking about. Those that promise safety, promise prosperity, a promise that would don't they promise? They've been doing it ever since before the Great Patriotic War. Now when a country lies in ruin, and our people scround in the dirt, what action do our leaders take? They promise. I am one for, I am one for, I'm sick of the promises, sick of the lies, sick of the barbarism. So right here, right now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not your leader, I never intended to be. I'm a man as you are who wishes for the cruelty to stop. We have the opportunity now to forge a new Russia, one which each man is truly equal. One without leaders to get to it, we'll have to fight. However, the men of Central Siberia have nothing to lose. If it is uh, we who keep the production flowing, us who ensures the bullets, bread, and steel arrives on time, in the name of all the dead children, all the widows, and all the crippled sons, to heck with the promises and the vestiges of revolt. The scars of the workers' revolt still remain, and if nothing's done soon, they'll continue to fester and abate him. We must remind the working class of a severe that no matter what their grievances may be with their administration, rebellion will not be tolerated. In addition to repairing the damage still left over from the fighting, we'll restore order to the industrial sectors of the region, and that any potential dissenters know that we are still in charge. Several methods have been proposed, and it will be ultimately up to our wise and noble president to decide which action, or would be the best course of action. We still have a little bit of surplus. The revolt of Novo Sibirsk. Oh boy. The strike has reached its ultimate conclusion, and we are now faced with a full-blown uprising based on Novo Sibirsk. And led by the previously insignificant foreman, Vitaly Kostin, the workers of Central Siberia have launched a final stand against the changing tides. There will be no backroom deal, no friendly negotiations, and no respite. The social contract between work and authority has been annihilated. Kostin's problem with the urban proletariat and a portion of the rural peasantry, a new world, birth among their ashes, upon the basis of this promise. Revolutionary cells have sprouted up not just in Novo Sibirsk, but across the country. We must batten down the hatches and raise the rivals and pray to all who will listen. Only once I will survive, the maelstrom that now arrives. Just when you thought the problems in Nova Sibirsk couldn't get any worse. Oh, we're still training. Well, that's not good. No, only two divisions were training. That's fine. Go in if you can. And converge there. Nice. You good? Ah, coffee's nice. Oh, workers, oh, workers, oh, workers. Oh, actually, deploy more soldiers, too, huh? Yeah, I think, have I done this one before? The last run, huh? We have negative nine uh, power. Great. And that's going to be the last one we make for a while. Because these garrisons are uh, not exactly what I want to use. Um, there's no occupied territories. Start slimming them down just a little bit. And there they go. Beautiful, my friends. Good. And we'll train this. We're going to go low. And we'll train two at a time. <coughs> so we don't spend as much money on them. Uh, after the end. Oh. And echo the West Russian War. Uh, it's a bit bugged. I definitely say it would be a bit bugged. Um, okay. <sighs> but I know I'm playing with it uh, after the update came out for the mod at the time it's recording, so that's kind of to be expected. Shrine the Sudovic State. Reward our allies. 
Hmm. <clears throat> Maintain equilibrium. Chief Morita, huh? Well, if we have to, I will replay this campaign off screen quite a bit, and then we'll get to where we really need to go. Yeah, I'm going to expand state welfare programs next. I wonder if that's elected, huh? Only one a day. The Federation of Paradise. It was early in the morning when Radio Free Siberia's programming changed in the newly integrated territories. Many would not fully realize the change itself, but it happened nonetheless. It was a permanent all the same. <coughs> At the first, changes were subtle. Announcements focusing on the improvements of civilian supply, including foodstuffs, consumer goods, and the like, but they soon increased. Both the frequency and intensity, the advantages of the new administration or the former in terms of goods delivered became an objective fact. Then this progresses to clear statements of the superiority of the Federation itself. Of course life was better now, of course employment options were superior. And in numbers and in opportunity, of course the lands were safer and more secure for the average citizen. How could any aspect of existence not be more optimal? <coughs> Most people claimed to be their friends and neighbors that they ignored the obvious propaganda and to some extent they did, but the concepts constantly spouted were never further than air shot away and over time they were internalized and just as propagandists intended. A variant of the truth, at least surely, right? Sovereign Security Act. Decrease strength of the people. Begin to improve admin efficiency. A sensible concessions. Um. Well. So, Sovereign Security Act. Admin efficiency does improve. This is going to begin to improve as well. More decentralized or more centralized. Hmm. Better poverty over here, but this one gives you better decryption and damage your since and encryption, which we'll need for, honestly, the war against the Germans. We need every single advantage we can get. Poverty gets better, industrial expertise changes, decreases trade unions illegal, decentralized. Um, what about enshrining the Slovak state? We must push forward the ideas of a state built on the principles of national stabilization and strength above all else, and managed by military officers who have proven their competence. Effective and capable men are necessary to unite all of Russia under the Federation, and the past failures of states such as the Central Siberian Republic, uh, which thought of stability and security as secondary concerns, has only proven further the necessity of the structure for the sake of peace. Yeah. Stability and security, man. Still only 1.19 every single month. Okay, which sucks. But it's because, uh, this is actually not bad. Factor up a plus 26%. That's pretty good. Construction speed plus 15%. Legacy of the Siberian Uprising is pretty bad. Assembly dissolved? Oh boy. Oh, that's Kennedy. Uh, the Federation Victorious, which is pretty nice. Huh. That's Norse Reduction. All Siberian armies. Decent. Virgin Lands. Oh, I do want... I usually like trying to use helicopters, too. We should try to get some helicopters as well. There we go. That doesn't matter right now. Garrisons. Messages of a revolt. Good. Um, up next, what do we want? It's GDP... Construction speed. I definitely want this one, but... Ooh, poverty rate. That's another one we want. Poverty rate will improve as well. You want to maximize lowering poverty as much as possible. Because right now, we're looking even better than before. GDP is 2.9%. Growth is 3.5%. It's not bad. Um, no Navy, no uh, na nuclear stuff. Yeah, to the strength of the people. Hmm. <clears throat> but like I said, we do have some comments to go through as well. <coughs> Two. I'll do the Sovereign Security Act, because we need uh, order and stability. No preventative measures are too drastic when the safety of our people is on the line. Terrorists will, and will be revolutionaries lurk behind every corner, and our current means of dealing with them simply is not sufficient any longer. A stronger, more iron fisted approach is necessary. The Sovereign Security Act will be our savior in these dark times. Our counterinsurgency forces will enjoy increased funding and supplies to perform their duties with enhanced efficiency, while certain political liberties abused by our hidden foes will be cracked down on. It's not likely to be popular after their own people, but hopefully they'll realize the necessity of such measures when our streets are safe again. Oh, look at that. Good job, Philippines. Industry, 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 industry. Increase opposition. Vasily Shukshin was a problem as far as the Federation central government was concerned. He was, furthermore, growing both in popularity and activity, and this prompted a similarly growing concern against the Soviet elite. Although he was always considered a dissident, railing against increased centralization of the government, and from his maddening secure office within Bar and all, he had always been personally manageable. He'd always been of a little relevance. His message has always been so contained, that was no longer the case, though. Unless the Soviet dominates central government, there were always, always, always going to be many people who, <clears throat> who lost out. We did not reap the massive rewards that their betters did, and while they may not have individual power, there were a lot of them. They were now, along with others, now turning out to Shushkin's public rallies, and slowly, but ever-increasing, numbers. 
Conflict seems inevitable. The only question is, none can get as a none that none can as a can as of yet answer is who will at the end emerge victorious. There are always malcontents under any system. Trans I want better transport helis. That was what I want. <clears throat> um, healthcare network is not bad to do either. I want us. Uh, we're, we're waiting so long, anyways. We might go there. Where is this one? I guess equipment will slowly begin to improve. We get quite a few more things. Can we afford it? Not really, honestly. So let's do this one first. Yeah, we're gonna need way more electrical grid power. Um, we can't do that one. Plus four. Plus sixteen. We can't do that one. Sorry. Darn, that sucks. That really sucks. Power in every state is modified by local resource factor. Building good consumption. <clears throat> ah, so bad, ah, so bad. But god dang, I love coffee. Oh, restore Soviet infrastructure. With the first leg of our expedition in Norals complete, we can now haul in heavy construction equipment to restore the old Soviet excavation equipment or infrastructure back to working conditions. Yes. Ah, naval stuff, yes. We're going to probably go with the Greenwater Navy. Probably for the best of us. Maintaining equilibrium. For the first time in many months, our cities are finally returning to the pre revolt orderliness. But there's still work to be done. All ghosts from the unification war still haunt our new territories to this very day, and they need to be exercised if our federation wishes to move forward in a bold new future. A heightened police presence will dissuade our new subjects from any foolish action, but a strong show of force is only half the battle. Meetings will be held across the provincial governors and mayors across Siberia to discuss the best ways to finish the integration of these troubled lands. With luck, we wanted to give too many concessions in the name of stability, but nothing to hide, nothing to fear. Nice job, Ukraine. As they did every night following supper, the family living in a recently constructed house in the suburbs of Nova Sibiris gathered together to watch the evening programs on TV. <clears throat> Tonight, an important announcement had been moved from the national newspaper, or national news, to do the front of the lineup, and the family, with the parents in particular, paid close attention. The government had the TV proclaimed while accompanied with patriotic pipes just passed the Sovereign Security Act in clear response to the many threats facing the state. The vast expanded powers granted to the authorities by the Act promised to decisively fight terrorist activity and protect the integrity of the Federation and its citizens. They promised peace and security for all, and that, should a good citizen have nothing to hide, they have nothing to fear. The family watched with, with, with great interest. The parents remembered well the chaos that engulfed the Central Siberia years since. The visceral fear that others, political, capital, cultural, and other wise, would engulf them, overrun them, and take them from the life they had just worked so hard for, and so they were content. <clears throat> the Act promised security, and the security was desired. They knew they had nothing to fear. They were good assistance, and they, of course, had nothing to hide. Security for the Federation and for our children. Active measures. Nostalgia. <clears throat> Special admin zones. Our four foes during the Unification Wars were a diverse bunch of nothing else, from the mad monarchists of Kimrovo to the armchair philosophers and artisans of Tom's. They all had vastly different approaches to governing their lands, and baffling enough, most of them worked. Why change what's already working? As long as these regions remain loyal to us, there's no need to crack down on them. Special admin zones have been established in these formerly hostile territories that continue the administrative method of bringing their previous owners. Also bringing in them in line with their own ideals of governance. A new region whose administration cannot be adapted, however, can always be granted to our friends in the industrial sector, but active measures. There are many ways one can influence the course of history to their liking. Some of these methods can appear small, but making, making big decisions in the grand scheme of things. After all, if a ship changes its course only slightly, the destination shall be entirely different. In this instance, our destination is a strong and stable Russia. Our security force is no stranger to manipulating the chain of events to suit our purposes. A few dishonest media campaigns here, a counterfeit document here or there, all of our agents must do is pull a few hidden strings in the minds of people who will be forever to focus in a more suitable direction. After all, an ignorant citizen is a content citizen. Nostalgia. Rosa looked forlornly at the Phoenix building squatting in her beloved Kansk. The stinking hulk dominated the street, all brand new concrete and steel, a little line of ants stood in front, each clutching a job application. She wanted to hate them for forsaking anarchy, for selling their labor to a pittance for, to the invader. These same men and women who only a short time ago sang the old songs and praised Makhno and Karapu, King. Now suddenly waited to entry into the capitalist machine. Rosa felt tears well up in her eyes, remembering the way things used to be. She missed her red and black cap. Her companions and the joys they shared together in building a future for all Russians. It wasn't supposed to be like this. It was a past so easily forgotten. Could she wake up day after day and pretend she wasn't an outspoken anarchist? That's when she locked eyes with them. Vavilov, once an organizer for the collective factory, stood in line, shame and deadness perme permeating his gaze. The two anarchists had once been exceptional friends and companions in labor, but now here they were, staring at once another. Uh, staring at one another on the Kansk streets, they would never speak again. Rosa realized she had the same look in her eyes, the same agony and sense of betrayal on the self. She clutched her Fennec's job application and shuffled towards in line with the rest of them. Mother Anarchy would not recognize her sons. But another democracy, which is not bad, well, let's reward our allies first. Promises are promises, and we made quite a few of them to our corporate friends during the time of crisis. Now that we are in a less immediate danger, they expect these promises to be kept, and our government has always 
at least met expectations, which would grant them new and more generous contracts with the Federation to allow them to expand into and exploit the resources of the new territories under our control. This will make their past investments into our cause profitable and convince them that continued cooperation with us is, would still be in their best interests. So, uh, one of the comments from yesterday asks, why did you not create the Federal Republic of Tuva, which would have benefited, uh, uh, you know, Shukshin and whatnot? I didn't do that because I, I, I like annexing territory. I'm sorry, I just, I'm a big person who likes less individual states. I prefer big states, big strong states. It looks cool, too. I don't know, just, that was just my thing. I was like, oh, I, I just want to do it. I want to do it. If you ever watch me play Kaiser Rock or Kaiser Rex, you know uh, I, I love... What the heck is this? Oh, just anarchy. I love, 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 love. Ooh, Kursk has done very well. This is looking very weird. Um, I love, like, having few, as few states as possible. Ro slowly improve. Uh, slowly improve. A bonus to industry would be very beneficial for us right now, too. So, and advanced developmental subsidies would be good, too. Yeah. I don't know why the game bugged out and just gave us this. I'm not going to complain too much. I like it, but... Look, Article's fairly darning to the establishment. Lumidla, Ludmilla could see that. That's why no one ever else would. It was a shame, really. The article is truly an exceptional piece of journalism written by the integrity and with integrity and genuine passion. Of course, no one ever read it, and tragically, the journals in question would have to be dealt with. Ludmilla had been uncovered with the paper for months now, being unassuming and by the books as possible. She had interacted with her co-workers just enough to avoid suspicion, just enough for them to open up to her. That's how the article detail in the Pokrishkin back corporate corruption and not-so-legal union-busting methods had come across her desk. Artyom was a good man, young and idealistic, ready to crusade against injustice with his typical typewriter and pen. Perhaps a great shame was dealing with the young crusader. Once the article had been destroyed, and Artyom had made a tragic point of telling Ludmilla to be careful with it. As he had no copies, Ludmilla would destroy him. The police was already in her pocket, and already agreed to arrest Artyom on the charges she had fabricated involving the indecent images of questionable age another SB agent had left in his home. A small price to pay for stability, but not a democracy. Conservatism, slowly improve efficiency, increase leaning towards federalism, and decrease leaning towards unitarianism versus trust in the party of power. Oh, so they improve. Well, as much as I want to do that one, well, we have to do another democracy because that is... Wow. We have a lot of paternalism. We need more shukshin here. Oopsie. Though it might seem unwise to rely once more on a system that failed us all miserably, there is an argument to be made for allowing the masses a greater measure of democracy, mainly that it would serve to replicate those hesitant to accept our democracy. Or, or <coughs> accept our government, I mean. <clears throat> yeah. It was to make the form of minor concessions and reforms within the state, as well as opening more leadership positions to civilians and supporters of democratic power, of course. We would not go so far as allow the people to have a real power over us, but by appearing to scale back our control over them, they might be more eager to serve our purposes, of course. Yes, I want to do that one, but encourage political thought. Uh, get more stability. Eh. Education. Let's research. Admin efficiencies, admin, admin positions are a super important to get. So this is all done. It's 1965, finally. So, my factory output, let's go with that one instead. Happy 1965, everybody. Growth has gone down just a little bit. Debt GDP ratio has gone up. But the yearly deficit's not too bad either. Fresh off the presses is pretty decent as well. Uh, but we're looking very green. Exactly how we want to look. As we're still suffering like minus 35% resource efficiency gain, so our grid power is looking very bad. Hey, RFK, good job. End of South African War. And would you look at that? Beautiful. Reward our allies. And now demo to democracy. Chaos in the Horn of Africa. Oh, oh, they lost. Oh my God. Oh, the OFN completely lost to South Africa. That's so bad for them. A controlled political spectrum. Although they have little actual chance of taking power again, it's always wisest not to underestimate the ambitions of the extreme movements of the left and right. In order to weaken them, and therefore strengthen our government, we will play them against each other, distracting them with their petty ideological struggle, convincing while convincing the people of their dangerous and violent nature, thereby slowly reducing them to irrelevancy without us having to actually act openly against them. By doing so, we'll take control of all politics in the Federation and keep the demagogues in check. I don't like this one. I don't want to lose political power because we already don't have enough. But we do what we must. Euro military district. Slowly losing against a black league, it looks like, maybe. And, oh. Uh-oh. The passionary. Oh. Uh, last time we actually saw them do a roll episode people. Proof healthcare. Well, we're going to go with education. And maybe that one next. We'll see. A nod to democracy. Because <clears throat> I really want to focus on the economy. I'm always... I love the economy. And, you know, I love improving it. One small step. In the city of Tomsk, a cheering crowd was gathered for the inauguration of uh, Alexander Vaznesensky as the mayor, a small but important step forward for the free and fair election in the Federation, after all. Vaznesensky had once been a high-ranking ambassador in directing the economic policy and thus helped to, to ensure the financial security of the Republic in its later days. The Republic was dead and gone now, though, and the Federation stood in its place, decided to make the best of it. Vaznesensky had joined the forces with Shukshin and stood as a candidate of liberty in the latest Tomsk mayoral elections, ultimately proving triumphant through his ideals. 
Now we've governed one of the most important cities of the Federation and aid Shukshin's cause further. In order to return to this great city, a semblance of the freedom it had once been enjoying. <clears throat> Even as he waved to the crowd as he walked up in the steps of the stage from which he would be inaugurated and then give his victory speech, he knew that this would be no easy test to accomplish. Fierce opposition awaited the lovers of democracy at the highest levels of the current government. Then again, good men never did get the right thing because it was easy. and freedom, men find truth, but consider Barnall's position. Nobles of maybe the administrative center of the Federation, but the adjacent city of Barnall is also an important linchpin in our nation. Its mayor, Vasily Shukshin, has quickly grown to be the second most powerful politician within the halls of power, and his particular views on how the state should be run have become pro more prominent as well. Unfortunately, Shukshin's rise has caused some rather predictable attention with his main rival, President Pokrishkin. In order to put a stop to this bickering before it gets out of control, perhaps it would be prudent to reach out to Shukshin and see if he's willing to compromise in some some way. Of course, the Afghashio is broken. Um, I do want to get more output, but industry, is so, of course, is still super, super important. Because we still need plenty of guns and whatnot, so. I lied. We're going to go with healthcare next. We don't care about Indonesia for this campaign. The disunited opposition. The protest, um, many would agree later, was doomed from the start. Formed in Kamarovo and focused on opposition to the government's increasingly tight grip on what it considered to be acceptable political viewpoints, so as organizing and subsequently participating in it hailed from a wide variety of backgrounds. They included provincial uh, officials, workers' representatives, disaffected bureaucrats, activists of all types, and in several cases, all proponents of the fallen neo rural kids. Let's give them great numbers, yes, but it, it became increasingly evident as any. May, any made any form of unified action near impossible. Those protesters on the rightward edges of the spectrum argued and clashed with those on the left, both by the weakness of those in the center, and those in the center reciprocated, refusing to pander to extremists in any kind of fashion. The police had naturally been called out, as it had been the original intention of the government to disperse the protest. Violently if need be, but as the hours continued, it became clear that such would not be needed. Our arguments among the protesters turned into fistfights, and before long, the protest collapsed entirely, dispersing soon after. Some of the most hardened protesters had to be arrested, of course, but an overall bit of victory won without much engagement. And many of the government hoped it was a sign of increasing irrelevance of opposition in general, a bloodless and effortless victory. All things in union. The challenge may have seemed insurmountable at first, but at least we can say that our administrative troubles are over. The last wound, uh, a wound of the workers of the revolt, have finally healed. And while our new laws continue to be, uh, lands continue to be adapted well into the Federation's laws. And more importantly, however, it seems our political disagreements with Barno have also been mended, at least for the time being, at least. President Pokrushkin is finally free to shape Siberia. Uh, <clears throat> However, he sees fit. With all the moving parts of our nation working in harmonious unison once again, our federation will be reforged into a nation of iron, worthy of claiming the man to a legitimate Russian government. Look at the column, too. Nice. Very nice. Very good. The military coup. Very cool. We're going to keep working with all what we have here as well. But we will need some of this. Oh, there goes Poland. Putting the pressure on. Uh, centralization, is, it, this is centralization, I can't let it stand. Oh, but you will, and when it reaches the floor, it'll pass. Orders from the top. Seriously, just don't even remember what happened. <clears throat> uh, or what the word federation means anymore. These measures are blatant political moves, too. Dimitri, no one cares. Shut up. Take it to the floor, please. You know how much I do that a single phone call can end your career. Today, Pokrishkin, who has prepared some measures to increase the pressure on Barno, the center of Shukshin's power base. Of course, they have to go through the Federation's legislative assembly, but without sway that Pokrishkin holds, and the web of influence that he and his clique has nurtured. Despite the grumblings from Shukshin's goons, there's a good chance that our measures will go through, lessening the power of Barno and her influence in the Federation. Let's get this done, then. The Siberian economy. Our consolidation of Central Siberia has opened up to us the vast wealth and potential that lies within Siberia. Siberia contains the potential to become the foundation of a strong unified state, one that will extend its might from the Pacific to Moscow. In order to properly realize uh, Siberia's potential, we must leverage our already impressive industrial base to exploit the wealth of the region. With the help of the national champions, our economic growth will be truly frightening to behold. Barno resists, of course. <clears throat> what are you saying to me, Ivan? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, as Pokrushkin swallowed the harsh silence below the receiver, I see what you're saying. Goodbye. Alexander Pokrushkin's anger betrayed his normally cynical exterior, but the ex-aviator did not lash out. He rarely ever did. One of his many confidence set across from Pokrushkin's desk, his hands tented. I can assume that Ivan was the bearer of the bad news. The only response, a simple grimace, was enough to bring the confident up to speed. I thought we had the numbers, I thought we had the names. Pokrushkin muttered as he stared out the window onto the bustling streets of Novosibirsk. His mind calculated his options busily. Uh, distant memory from long ago, a piece of off-hand advice from a friend floated into this consciousness. Never make a decision angry, words Pokrushkin tried hard to live by. Barnall's won this round of the game, Pokrushkin stated matter-of-factly, and trace of anger long gone, but the victory is still a fantasy. You might be getting more popular than our opposition in circles, but that means nothing. There will be another battle, another war in that time. We'll make sure that there's no winning for the dude of Barnall. As confident with little to no a little to say, nodded succinctly. It was true, Shushin's name was whispered from the peripheries of the Duma. It was seen more and more every day, but Pokrushkin was in control. Like him tomorrow. Can ignore all the embassy. 
Transport of material to and from Norals to our industrial and commercial centers in the south has been a difficult endeavor. The permafrost has made the establishment of roads and railways difficult to say the least, but there's another venue. By having your men reclaim D Dudinka and reconnect it with the old Soviet railway system as part of the Siberian plan in the 30s, we can use a Yenisei rubber to once again ferry products to more hospitable destinations downstream. Nice. Supervised agricultural sector. Happy May, everybody. We are getting to May now. I love coffee. That's not that's not bad. More growth is not bad either. Or purpose of Siberian plan. Ooh. Oh, but more growth. Oh, I guess we'll do this one first. Up until now, the Federation's industrial might has been built on the backs of the Bukharan Siberian Plan. While Siberian Plan was far, by far Bukharan's greatest achievement, it cannot be denied that the industrial base it was responsible for has been lagging behind in terms of in the march of progress. We should create the plan as a template to, uh, with which to create a modern and improved plan in order to meet the needs of the modern industrial state. It will be up to the industrial theorists and brilliant minds of the Federation to build this new plan, but when it is complete, our industrial might will be unassailable within Russia. <clears throat> The economy boomed as the earth divested of her resources. Profits so soared, or soured. Unemployment remained low and the people were happy. The military was strong, staffed by fit young men eager for battle. The Central Siberian Federation stood as a beacon of civilization in the Russian waste. A true city on the hill, to the savages crowded around it. The air was calm. Peace had descended over the land. It was a lie. The peace nothing but a symptom. Well, what was to come? The air was calm, but it was cha charged, rippling with static. A storm loomed, and both Pokrushkin and Shukshin knew. Um... <clears throat> Yet even if the people did not, they secreted themselves away in the fortresses with their servants, plotting the downfall of the other. The new struggle would not be over land and resources, but not some battle for the uh, bad for, battle for dead Russia. Armies would not clash in the streets. It would be a war of intrigue, of back alley deals, and political machinations. The Federation held its breath. The war for Siberia's heart begins. Oh, growth gets even higher. It got lower. It got higher. God dang it. <laughs> why, oh why, oh why. Um, encourage political thought. I like the more stability option. More construction speed would be okay, but we're not even really building that much as is. But we'll definitely expand the power grid right now. I should have done this one earlier, to be honest with you. Yeah. But get more weekly stability, which is nice. And more stability in general. Increases industrial regulations, token regulations. Increase of admin efficiency. Oh, yes, please. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. We live in the managerial age after all. Another comment from yesterday said, uh, he says he hopes that we go with President Shukshin as our direction for the campaign. Oh, that was bad trying to take them on first. Oh, boy. Adds eight power in general and a thermal electric plant. Nice. A Siberian plan of our own. Bukrushkin and Langemark, as well as numerous faceless accountants, corporate leaders, and other bean counters, had gathered together around a great table of polish where long ago, liberated from the Soviet High Command. Gentlemen began at Langemark. Reading from a set of hastily scrawled notes that he clutched in his hands, we stand at a rare opportune moment in history. Central Siberia now rightfully belongs to us, and with Siberia comes our fast resources. Until now, we've locked the infrastructure and the heavy machinery to exploit them, but this has changed. Langemark paused for a moment, allowing himself to breathe for him for the information and sink into the brains of those assembled. We hold our hold, or Central Siberia, secure. We can now begin to collect what Mother Russia seemed to fit to bless us with. Myself and President Pokrushkin have discussed it at length a plan to see it all enriched. Both the state and the corporation swallowing. Longlebark Adam, Mr. President, I yield the floor to you. Thank you, Minister of Economics, began Pokrushkin. Siberia is laden with petrol, natural gas, gold, diamonds, iron, and coal, billions, if not trillions, of rubles worth of resources lie beneath the earth. I do not wish to mince words, and so here's my proposal. We, the government, will subsidize all mining and extraction operations in exchange for a percentage of the materials to be negotiated on an individual basis. Together, we'll transform the Federation from just another warlord state into an economic juggernaut and profit in the process. All I ask from you is your help. It was not long before the voices were raised in a rousing affirmative. Let us put Bukharan to shame. Um, so if we want to improve mechanization, it's not very high, so we're going to go with that next. Supervise the agricultural sector. As we take a look at this, anything here we really want? Not really. Political thought's still okay. Um, so it's best to wait. The lands of the Altai near, no near Novosibirsk are incredibly fertile, almost being without compare in the region and a potentially inviolable asset to our plans. However, attempts to make use of this natural boundary are impeded with a great disarray and inefficiency present in our agricultural sector, a problem that we are increasingly forced to give our attention to preventing it from worsening. Fortunately for us, there is simple a solution to this, which is establishing firm and vigilant supervision of the whole sector, allowing us to streamline it and organize it. Good. Uh, we're going to wait because I want... Ex oh, that one's fine to do. I don't want the the bonuses from everything else we've been doing here too. We actually have a positive yearly deficit. Look at that, huh? Military spending's pretty low, which is good. Very manageable deficit, which is nice to see. Let's not produce anything outdated. <coughs> Excuse me. Better industrial equipment as well. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Beautiful. Yeah, that got worse. 
So only four, which is fine for now, but subsidize, subsidies for mechanization? The Siberian peasantry has so long been utilizing out, awfully outdated methods and techniques, with some of them dating back to the time of the Tsars. This backwardness produces two worrying consequences for a federation. Uh, a, war, a low agricultural output and a large swath of our workforce being tied up in inefficient activities. Thank God that's over. Oh, look at that power grid now. Thank Jesus. Well, mechanize the countryside. With subsidies and loans, our farms will be able to afford the most modern machinery, a rapidly increasing production and breaking your reliance on large numbers of manual laborers. Nice. And perfect time for industrial equipment to get a boost. Absolutely perfect. Oil. Ah. It's good. Not great. Better. Uh. Actually, uh, over here. Nice. Oh, we got one more? Yes. Primary relief. Yes. <clears throat> Expand this factory city. More growth. More inflation. More growth. The corporations of Phoenix, Siberia, and Titan are the engines that keep the Siberian Federation rolling. Without the considerable economic power of their side, it seems likely that we would have been able to prove, come as far as we have. They provide boundless unemployment opportunities, employment opportunities, unmatched industrial expertise, and most importantly, economic growth beyond our wildest dreams. Our national champions deserve a central role in the economy. It's been the case all along, of course, but it's time to make this arrangement official. The Federation shall march forward with the soil corporations at its greatest weapons. Someone says, uh, we, help we go with President Shukshin. Um, another comment says, uh, can you do... TNO USA as progressive MCS or Margaret Chase Smith. Uh, we'll see, maybe eventually. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, more divisions, just in case for the future? Yes, good. I didn't do that too, I really want to. Far Eastern Soviet Socialist Republic. Good. Expand mining operations, we'll invest in mining, the, uh, improving the, expanding the mines, and improving the equipment used by workers? Yes. Extra, expand petroleum excavation? Yes. We're currently uh, primarily relying on old Soviet railways and gauges from the early 20th century. But modernizing the links from Norilsk to Dudinka and Lesotho to Bears to the south, we can greatly improve our situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Positively. Absolutely. Better educational standards. Or actually, where are we for academic base? Uh, it's getting pretty good. We keep it a few months later on. We might benefit more if we wait to do this one. So let's uh, so we can do this. Expand the uh, factory city. Novosibirsk is widely known as a factory city, an industrial linchpin that is sometimes regarded as more of a giant factory than a place where people make their homes. Indeed, the city is the most industrialized in all of Siberia, and we see no reason why we shouldn't embrace this fact. With the hope of our loyal national champions, Novosibirsk will be expanded for far beyond its current and already extensive capabilities. The city shall be one that never rests, where the factories stretch beyond that uh, which I can see, and work day and night to build a stronger, safer future for all of us. And in mind, uh, living standards. Economies exist to support states, and states, in turn, exist to support the lives of the people that they live under them. Our economy, our state, and neither are exempt from these rules. As we continue our efforts to reunite Russia, and our economy expands within our borders, so too will our state have to make use of this expanded economy to improve the lives of its citizens. If we do not, we run the risk of inspiring the level of popular unrest we can afford to have at such a critical moment. As such, we will devote more of our industrial output to the creation of various products that will make the lives of our consumers easier and more convenient. Nice. Constantine uh, stared out of the fields of his farm, a gently uh, rocking sea of amber lit up by the cold morning sun. The boards of his porch creaked under his feet as he stepped up to the railing, taking in a breath of the crisp air. Harvest season was almost upon him, and he could just about taste it in the wind as he watched his children run, carefree through the acres of wheat, playing some game that only existed in their precious little minds. Constantine let a smile creep across his face, remembering when he and his family were nothing but just another group of battered refugees. But things are different now. Better. The children now smile and laugh and will not have to worry about where their next meal will come from. That very fact was very apparent as Constantine felt the tall, tail tall scent of cooking a breakfast with waft past his nose. They'd come so far. Uh, they did it all themselves. The blisters and cuts in their hands after clearing acres of brambles, the rackets of hammers striking nails and saws biting through the wood when they rebuilt the house where the breakfast now sizzled in a pan. The soreness in his arms after working for hours so in the field. It was all worth it. For once, it felt like he belonged somewhere. This was where he was meant to be, not by the grace of God, but by his own will. Constantine had a home for his family. Beautiful fields with their own bounty to harvest soon, and most of all, he was able to watch his children play without a care in the world for the first time in ages. Bright, bright sun, a brighter future. Beautiful. Beautiful. Establishing a consumer sector. <clears throat> Look at that growth. Our effort to move industrial production towards the output of consumer goods has had the effect of showing the value of having a robust consumer sector, which would add our economic growth and make our people more prosperous. We've already secured the agreement of the national champions on this, allowing us to work freely, whether through subsidies or incentives or other methods, to encourage further output of the consumer products and continue development of this new sector of the economy. Yes. Just yes. Oh, so how do I recommend you switch to 2 3 game speed? Uh-oh. Why is that? Is someone killing each other? Or has that been there the entire time? 
Oh, is there a nuclear war going on? Uh, is there a nuclear war going on? Uh, just in case, maybe we should save. Oh! The Black League is actually struggling a lot against the Zlatos, the Republic. Look at that. That is kind of different. <clears throat> Kazakh SSR. I'll actually take him out. Oh, we'll take him out later with uh, Brave New World. Of course, I might have to, I might probably replay all this actually off-screen. New Russia. Ah, Kaminsky. Economy, 0.53 billion is not great. That is just skyrocketing right now. It is what it is. Leader Free India. Who the heck is that? Lal Bahadur Shastri. Oh, wait. What does Republic of China own? Oh, we have the Mama to integrate it here, too. That's true. Oh, they do have the oh, they do have the unique. I don't know. Okay, the Mahmud, which was integrated here too. Oh, public China, Republic of China. There's two Republics of China. I've not played that mod in a long time. I wonder if there's any new paths for it. Maybe that'd be cool. If there was. Uh, we can do that one again. I want to wait for that one. Where are we for this one now? Research facilities, academic base. It's getting better. It, oh, it just takes so long to get there. We, that's not mandatory to get to, though. So, our geopolitical future. The Federation's position is secure, and Russia quickly stabilizing under rule. We can begin looking outwards towards the world. Given the relatively non-ideological nature of our government, we can find ourselves uh, with great diplomatic opportunities. Japan and Sphere may seem happy to deal with us in corporations, as does the U.S., which has indicated it would support us in a conflict between us and Germany. The Federation's future is still uncertain, but if we can secure allies to help defend us, and shoot agreements to reinforce our economy, there will be nothing we can't do. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Even better development. Yes. Hey, more growth. Nice. Uh, with this, ooh, we're almost at fair rating for credit. Nice. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Just waiting for this to get done, too. Uh, anything else here we really care about? Nope. Mind living standards. Very good, very good. Oh. Oh. What's going on? Is Indonesia having an actual civil war now or not? Or someone dying here? I was right. Everyone's killing themselves. I love it. Uh, let's go over here now because we don't want to forget. Get special forces, air assault companies. Beautiful. Four instructors, yes. And we have enough political power saved up for that. Very reason. Pushing to our neighbors, picking a trade partner. Uh, travel to the east or expand the all Severian army. Uh, bad for Italy. This is just a lot of blueprints. Our, our position on Central Siberia is secure, and the time is coming to turn our attention back to the world. To revive our dormant uh, foreign policy, or foreign service, and once more make our presence known, however we may be. So we turn east to the lands of the Empire of the Rising Sun, uh, across the Mongolian steppe, and to the land of the free, our neighbors across the Arctic Circle. Russia's back. I kind of want to go to the Trin. Trin? The Twin Eagles. But we'll see. Let's go over here first. Uh, oh, look at all those blueprints. And distress stuff. Good, we're going to go with that one. Connect and expand the research fields. Uh, well, the improved lands connections between our capital and the north, so insofar as they're possible, we can make some one final push for greater resource exploitation in the northern regions. Nice. Invest in summertime ports. Yes. Establish reliable power supply. Yes. Fortify Sivgrad. Originally built to be the mining city based on the flawed geological studies in the 30s, the planned city of Sivgrad has been largely abandoned since the 30s with only its foundations remaining. With the possibility of conflict with our eastern neighbor, it would be irresponsible for us to leave our northern front unguarded. Due to strategic location, turning Sivgrad into a proper military installation would serve, solve the problem with our northern front being difficult to defend in the event of a war. Yeah. Economy, point four. Christmas war. Very cool. Very nice. Academic base. We're getting there. Mission to our neighbors, huh? Travel to the east. Sir, there's some concern about the steady escalation of the debate surrounding our state's foreign policy. The president looked up from the papers that the aide had just handed him. What could possibly be so dangerous about foreign policy? Specifically, the concerns are pointed at Phoenix and Severe, as you know. Yes, yes, the backbones of our weapons and agricultural industries. I'm fully aware of what these corporations might do around here. All right, well then, uh, <clears throat> the two corporations both desire uh, different trading partners. Phoenix supports diplomacy with the OFN in America. The U.S. is a cutting-edge technology and has no reason that, to fear that their supplies might be used against them. They don't believe the Japanese will be nearly as willing to negotiate arms deals. Meanwhile, Sabir wants to trade primarily with the Sphere. They believe the, the Sphere uh, can provide unique opportunities that America can simply never provide. 
Uh, they wouldn't be such a problem for our economy if the two corporations were trying to sort of sway us to their side. They're bribing every politician they can get their hands on, and there's even some allegations that the two corporations are trying to sabotage each other. If this matter isn't resolved, their stocks could fall and bring your economy down with them. Pokershkin could do nothing more than sigh. He looked up at the aid. I'll look into this. Just get some people on damage control. Why can't they just play nice? So Phoenix wants the U.S. Sabir wants a sphere. Sabir, why do you want the sphere, man? Uh, in the meantime, they have no... So these... People are, are irrelevant. Um, power? We can actually reduce the power now. Even more irrelevant, hopefully. 30 day cooldown, okay. Sabir is giving us a bonus right now. These guys are not. Phoenix, um. Just loyalty. Now we get a small little bonus. Not very much. Well, what we have the political power for, anyways. Zero progress in the region. Uh, Black League missions. I mean, that'd be cool and all. I wonder if we could actually do that. That'd be kind of cool, but I always like to focus more on other stuff down here. Ooh. Yeah, that's good to do. A TL2 Mega Corpse. Okay, so this is a kind of a game gamey thing here, if I remember correctly. You can't always choose what you want. Um, so it's basically between Sabir and Phoenix. Sabir, Agriculture Mega Corporation, which they want to call Prosperity Sphere, which we're trying to go with Sabir. Um, even though I personally want to go with the US, but the one year before we pick a side, I feel like pick one would be an economic disaster. So we're going to go and try to go Sphere and uh, Sphere. Increase Sphere influence. Moderate Razor Sphere trade influence Sphere a little bit. Uh, slightly lower OFN trade influence. Increase Sphere influence. M mass farming in Korea. <coughs> Greatly raise Sphere in trade influence. Import wheat to them. Build military. Phoenix military factories in America. North Carolina gets more stuff there. Oh, that's cool. Sign military contracts. Build ports in Australia, that'd be kind of cool. Neutrals, Phoenix, Sabotage Phoenix. Picking a trade partner. Well, I guess we're going to do mass farming in Korea. Yep. Wheat imports, moderately raise our trade sphere influence. Oh man. Make sure to wait to do this one later. Alright. These guys are not bad. Support, air support. I want to make them a little thicker though. They're gonna need some RE on these guys. We're gonna need some serious artillery eventually. That's right here. Nice. Still want to save stuff for here too, but we'll see. Oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The toss is one. Bruh. Bruh. Are you kidding me, bro? Dragonoff. Nice job. Jesus Christ. I was not expecting that at all. Holy crap. Hey, influence is... Oh, not five. Fifteen. Oh my god. We're fighting against the AI here. If I have these cons commands, uh, I probably will. We'll see. Our preparations for departure. Port wheat. To all members of the Federal, Federal Diplomatic Corps regarding forthcoming departures and assignments. Uh, the direction of the central government, the Federal Diplomatic Corps has been instructed to prepare and in general among all departments for the immediate reassignment of considerable numbers of personnel to elite alternative domestic and foreign postings. Overtures on the part of the Federation towards membership of the Organization of Free Nations, as well as both the Empire of Japan and the states within its sphere of influence, have been made. I was expected that response to these overtures will, in the immediate future, necessitate the establishment of foreign bureaus for the purpose of direct relations, as well as facil facilitation of trade. Um, yeah. The Corps expects that any personnel so assigned to such foreign bureaus keep in mind the geopolitical position of the nations in which they operate, both in relation to the Federation and in relation to other international alliances, until such a time is instructed. As instruction is received as to the direction of the Federation's international political associations, no favoritism of any kind is to be displayed. If you or your colleagues have any concerns, do not hesitate to direct them to your immediate superior. The call will return to apply as quickly as possible. But keep the good of the Federation in mind always. Missions to our neighbors. Though we might seek allies abroad, it would be unwise to neglect those uh, states neighboring us, allowing our relationships with them to deteriorate. Those include the Kazakhs, a future long since tied to that of Russia, the Chinese, once arrived in the East and now a promising opportunity, and the Mongols caught between us and the sphere. Until Russia is reunified, conflict with outside states is one of the last things we can afford. Additionally, much of our economy depends on trade with our neighbors, and we must avoid lost profit where we can. Partnership in China. 
uh, a civil discussion with a smoke-filled boardroom of Nova Sibir's ex executives from Sibir and the Fennec set, and talk about the direction of the Federation's foreign policy. The men were dressed in the finest suits and smoked the finest imported cigars. A man from Sibir spoke up. It seems clear to me that we should open up closer ties with the Japanese. We can leverage the influence of the Zaibatsu and increase our own influence in the Japanese markets. Are we serious? The Japanese markets are dominated by the Zaibatsu and will be operating at a loss for years. It's too risky. We would be much better off breaking off into the American markets, an executive from Phoenix insisted. Perhaps we might look to the former triumvirate to the economic chaos that have recently experienced could be the perfect time for us to strike. They are truly untapped markets that are hungry for new investments, yet another Phoenix man put forward. All of you need to be ignoring a large source of potential profit. The Rock may have been ravaged by a civil war, but it's still a very rich market, as the man from Sabir stopped speaking. The boardroom felt completely silent all around the table. The other executives looked at him with aghast expressions. Are you insane, the Germans? Those dudes would kill us sooner than do all business with us. What kind of BS have you Sabir boys been drinking? The Rock is off the table, period. After that, the boardroom descended into raised voices with just a uh, short shouting. Board members wagged, wagged their cigars at each other and hurled insults. By the end of the meeting, tensions uh, reached their highest point, and only by... Only the break for lunch prevented the room from existing into complete chaos. Business as usual. Uh, what else can we do here? Worker training? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I have to use consequence for this, I'm probably going to have to use consequence for this, honestly. Yeah. Partnerships in China. In spite of domination and exploitation by the Japanese, China has become a truly large market with easy and largely secure investments, and it only continues to grow as time passes. Though their ability to act on their own is limited, we will reach out with them within the boundaries they possess under the watchful eye of the sphere and forge economic and strategic partnerships to whatever extent we can to strengthen both parties and allow us greater access to and influence in the markets of East Asia. Why not? Because we can and we should. I should have waited to do this part of the branch, but oh well. Decrease loyalty, slightly lower our own trade influence. It's just better to build ourselves up. Marley raise it, yeah. Decrease the loyalty of Phoenix. Oh, decrease the strength of Phoenix. Decrease the loyalty. Decrease all fan influence. Increase fear influence. Moderately raise, increase the fear. Maybe that one too. Nice. And uh, you. Oh. Connections with Mongolia. Caught between two worlds, one that of the rising sun began to set, and the other of a Russian bear coming out of hibernation to avenge its humiliation. <clears throat> the Mongols must align with one or the other to protect themselves in increasingly restless Asia. Obviously, it'd be in our best interest to make every effort to convince some of the benefits of aligning with us, of course. We will initiate talks to improve our relationship with them, and, and securing our trade around the region and ensuring a stable buffer state but against the state for the time being. And finally, we have improved academic base. Thank God. Establish educational standards. How can we help to cultivate a world-class economy where our people continue to go about their lives without an education to speak of? To say that our education system is in shambles would allude to the existence of such a system to begin with. In reality, any semblance of a proper schooling body fell into the abyss along with the rest of the Soviet Union over two decades ago. Let's finally lay out the groundwork for a proper education system. We should develop new curricula and guidelines for the classrooms to make sure that the students of the Federation are being taught in the ways of the modern world. Yes. Sam Tech Research? Yes, I believe so. That would be good to do. Education allocation. Partnerships. Yes, yes. Add more schools. Yes, good. Grants for research and development. We're never going to be able to say <clears throat> or stay ahead of our problems when the entire federation still uses technological methods that wouldn't look out the date 30 years ago. Unfortunately, having an advanced society is a bit more complicated than just waiting for skilled scientists and technicians to appear. To speed the process along, we shall strategically design or designate certain sectors within the nation to receive specialized grants to aid research and development. Once we grease the wheels a little, our next generation of scientists will be within our reach. Absolutely. Happy June, everybody. Happy, happy June. Don't worry about debt and the economy. We're just in debt up to our eyeballs, that's all. Uh, what else can we do here? Oh, we're doing that already. Nice. Here? No. We'll do this one. Air assault's nice. Maybe it goes into isolation. We got stuff here. Spike something goes down. That's good. All that infighting. Gotta love it. Air doctrine. Uh, air superiority, probably. Maybe for now. I don't know. We'll see. Consolidate the energy sector. Under the soil of Siberia lie vast reserves of oil and natural gas, fuel hydrocarbons, and the lifeblood of the modern age. Until now, those riches lay mostly unexplored, but that must end very soon. We must organize and consolidate the energy extraction industry. 
No longer to be left in the hands of the small companies and adventurers, the nature of this business shall demand an intense capital, and when our government will grant that. While the guarantees of profit to our private partners and investors by way of an established monopoly and government inputs, the severe energy sector will be generally efficient. Hopefully. I'll go into that one, why not? We have the political power for that one. Oh, experts at opening experts at China. We lose a little bit of political power, 14 days. When removed, we get 90 political power. Need to consumer goods. Prioritize Chinese imports, huh? Mega Corp infighting will equalize. I'm going slower. Oh, we could try that. Why not? Try it. Hey, that's green now, at least. That's not bad. 50% is not great, but, you know. We're doing the best we can as someone has just died. Oh! Fiatka! Welcome back. What happened there? Vladimir III, he's, a, he's not easy to beat sometimes, you know. Proof Healthcare Network, of course. Improved is good to see. The riches of Siberia. As we continue to expand our industrial base, it will be imperative to keep up with the constant flow of resources to feed the engines of our progress. Thankfully, the lands of Siberia are rich with the natural resources that will be essential to driving our ever-growing economic needs. With the aid of our good friends and allies and the national champions, it's only a matter of time before the vast wealth of Siberia will be available to us in quantities unheard heard of before. With the riches of Siberia, it must be exploited for the good of the Federation, of course. They're continuing to match us. Slightly lower open trade influence, increased fear, moderately raise our influence. I'd rather do moderately. Anything else? Prioritize. Sure, why not? Expand the All-Siberian Army. Although we recently made great gains in our efforts toward the reunification of Russia, we still control only a fraction of much work remains to be done to ensure the continued success of our armed forces. The first step in this is to expand the army, making it larger, stronger, and deadlier than ever before, to the point where many of our enemies will crumble before. Many other areas of the military need to be developed, but it's the simplest and easiest one. The soldiers of the Federation march ever onward, and tomorrow forever. Are you sure about this, Luca? His former colleague asks. Yes, Mikhail, do you have a better suggestion? No, just I never thought I'd be working for Titan. Neither did I, but don't give up hope yet. Just because the Republic fell doesn't mean we can still be looking to the future, huh? Mikhail seemed to consider it slight, silently, finding some solace from the anxiety the whole team felt since the Federation troops marched through the Tomsk. Luca wished. Uh, d uh, <clears throat> he believed his own words, but he couldn't. After the surrender, he found himself alone with Mikhail, Artyom, and three other scientists looking to him for guidance. He was prepared to work within a command structure and lead a small team on a single project, not making decisions for people that would shape the rest of their lives without any guidance. It wasn't what he wanted, it wasn't fair, and yet, here he was. The worst part of it was the simplicity that offered choice to them. They would work with Titan, or they would not work at all. Uh, the sheer injustice of it drove Luca to tears sometimes, but there was simply nothing else. The Titan brought, bought out everything. There's no other way. Someone, something died in him every time he told himself that. Perhaps it was for the best. It made it easier to look at his team members in the eye when he spoke to them. Luca looked at the rest of the team while Michaela stared out the window in contemplation. They sat quietly, the usually lively discourse dead and gone. No more theories, no more arguments, no more idealism instead. Their eyes revealed the same image as in Luca's heart. A lonely flame in the dark finally spluttering out. But without the Republic, what are we even working for anymore? Mikhail asked, desperation once again in his voice. The same thing we've always been working towards, Lucas said, his lip twisting into a lifeless smile as he repeated the motto of his soon-to-be employer. Progress. Hey, something nice. And a credit improved too, which is also very good. Effects of the debt interest have lower, now it's below our growth, thank God. Yearly deficit's it's still very manageable, as inflation is dropping. Love it. 80 influence, nice. Sixty-eight is a bit ahead of time. Um, tanks we're probably not even going to be using tanks, honestly. Planes would be beneficial for our cause. Vast developmental subsidies that'd be very good too. Uh, Sixty-eight. Sure, why not? Basic motorized, improved motorized. Uh, gotta wait to get to there too. <coughs> yeah, there's sixty-nine. Nice. Cool. Can't do anything with China again. Darn it. In the army again. Fidor hastened to strap his boots on as they were with call sounded. He was still exhausted from the drills from the previous day. His bones ached, his mind so fogged with sleepiness. 
The surgeon clanged the bell so loud it hurt Fedor's ears. Move it, worms, you worthless sacks of crap aren't worthy being in my beloved army. To the fields now. Fedor's old sergeant, the Tomsk, was nearly as boisterous, preferring rousing speeches about the defense of democracy against the hordes of the wasteland. This army was different. This army was with the big dog in Siberia, and woe beside, or betide, and who claimed otherwise. Offense war versus defense war, suppose Fyodor. The man ran. Performed live fire drills, sparred all the while during the relentless abuse of the sergeant. Despite his former service in the army of Tomsk, Fedor could still have in the boot camp. Swore in the boot camp he was put through, then the former nation was far less strenuous. And the new army, his body was hardened just as his mind was broken and shaped into the soil of the Federation. As he lay exhausted and was caught that night, brain barely able to form coherent thoughts from the constant fatigue, he briefly pondered the irony that led him here. Once a defender of democracy, Fuhrer was now in service too well, a slightly different form of democracy. I was supposed to get to live with that. Think of it as just a change in uniform. What's going to improve next? At least this facility is getting better. Agriculture is rapidly advancing. Healthcare is doing quite well as well. Uh, industrial expertise is doing okay. Equipment is doing okay, and military professionals, and we don't talk about that too much. Oh, we're a little lower now. Oh, God, no, that's not good. <clears throat> so, we're only halfway through it. God dang it. Uh, yeah, go ahead and do that one. We'll probably keep doing that one, because that's actually pretty good, because it lowers the influence, but also raises ours a little bit, so. But we got do we something here. Unlock decisions to help it easier to pick a trade partner. Hopefully, I want to do that one. 0.5% growth seems so good. And only 0.4% growth, but is it lower inflation at least? That'd be nice. Incorporate new territorial armies. Many of the lands conquered by the Federation fielded impressive armies when they saw their independence. Even if they weren't so impressive as to be able to prevent defeat and annexation by us. It proved wise to incorporate the best of these forces into our own military, growing it significantly and allowing us to have them fight those we face next. Although we must be cautious so that our armies do not become infested with extremists, we can also be afford to be too picky in these chaotic times. Nice. 100, nice. Do that one too. Ooh, what does this one say? Use connections to Mongolia. Happy August, everybody. Happy August. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah. The same kind of, yeah. The same things as China had. Which is not bad. Sabrian so War Doctrines. Imperial Flag. Oh, they actually unified over there. Uh, Land Doctrine, Armor Technology, Lessons of the Unification Wars. Oh, we are on Strategic, the strategic Theorem. 10,000 more map is not bad to have. Armor XP is not as good, but... Cost reduction for that's not bad. Ramp power is irreplaceable, though. Armor, we're not going to use armor, though. Lessons of the Unification Wars. War is a punishing teacher, and every mistake made is an advantage given to the enemy. Throughout the Siberian Unification Wars, we learned a great deal about our armed forces' effectiveness. Its strengths, its skills, most importantly, its weaknesses. These past few wars have exposed some glaring weaknesses in our army. They taught us what our soldiers were good at and what they were very poor at. Those were hard won lessons. They must not be forgotten as we work to improve and modernize a military doctrine. Let's ensure that our military is enforced to learn these lessons again. Water under the bridge, Mr. President. As we have been begun the integration of the armed forces of former warlord states, a pressing matter has arisen. A prisoner of war that held officer rank within the new defunct, now defunct militaries are requesting that we release them from prison and grant them a commission. Ordinarily, I wasn't hesitated but refused such a request, but I have seen it to fit uh, to pass their desires up to your office. The return of prisoners of war became a difficult proposition when the country they were captured from no longer exists. Additionally, these officers, including some of the senior rank, could provide invaluable military expertise to our own armed forces. I have my own personal concerns with this request, as the parting of these responsibles for waging war against our nation sets a dangerous standard. What we don't need is a Narnix claiming legal president for their own pardons. Naturally, the choice is yours, and I will be awaiting your reply. Signed, uh, Dmitry Glinka, Minister of Defense. Pardon them all, but no commissions. Pardon those of senior rank and grant them commissions. No pardons and no commissions? I want to do that one. No commissions. But I also understand where we're at right now. Wheat imports. And then sabotage Phoenix would be nice, but we want to decrease influence. Probably. And we still can save a little bit of political power here too. Until we spend it more, of course. It's gonna be a long video, isn't it? France aligns with Germany. What a concept! <coughs> Anything up here? Nope. Keep it right around there. Happy September, everybody. 1966. Very good. Now we're looking at 0.1 billion. Not great. 56 is over, slowly tapering off. His growth is going quite well. It's a little bit under our interest rate, which sucks. But military spending is slowly going up, too. Um, honestly, with 20... How many divisions? 23, 27. That's enough divisions for now. We're done making more. That's fine. Ah. More poverty relief, yes. We're going to continue doing more influence here, too. 
And more weed imports. Look at that, 0.34. That's so good. Oh my god, I love it. Siberian Air Fleet. Revised training programs. Having incorporated many of the army's adoptions and armies themselves into our military, we've discovered many inadequacies in our training regiments and army induction process as a whole. It would do us well to rework our training course so that we might be putting more professionalized soldiers as we move away from the mercenary type training we used before. Utilizing the adoptions procedures we have adopted from these other subjugated warlords. Hopefully this will allow us to improve our army's long-term effectiveness and severe air fleet. The air forces of the Federation have always been one of the greatest advantages, soaring above to rain fiery death upon those of our enemies unlucky enough to be below them and shooting down any foolish enough to try and oppose them in the air. However, it's becoming clear that it is growing severely outdated, and the plan is little more than toys in comparison to those fueled by any mighty modern states. We must begin work immediately to modernize and improve our air fleet and close the technological gap of our proudest military branch. Nice, nice. Good stuff, my friends, good stuff. Mm, I want to do this one next. Model the Raver's Sphere Influence. Oh, that's that back down to 100. Nice, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, infantry anti air. I know things have kind of slowed down in this campaign so far just because of what we're doing right now, but that's okay with me. Uh, I don't really need that land. Attack would be nice and all, but, you know, we can wait for that. We're still doing that. Army organization regain is not bad. Sphere and air fleet is not bad either. Um, cool. Because we get roughly almost a little under two a day. So right now, Titan is like, oh my god, I hate you. Uh, the Phoenix hates us. Oh my god, that's so bad. That's so bad. But uh, Severe is like very powerful, but their loyalty is not very good. Well, that's not good. Huh. Yep. Gotta do it. Import Japanese jets. The Empire of Japan shares plenty of blame with the Nazis for the fall of the old Union and the fracturing of Russia. They occupy rival Russian lands and are unmatched in their arrogance, and yet it cannot be denied that they are world leader in technology. The Japanese are especially adept in the areas of aviation, though it would be easy to turn our noses up at the Japanese and their technology. For now, we must swallow our pride and study the designs of their jet aircraft. For the good of the Federation, of course. It's always, always for the good of the Federation. Never forget that. Oh god, we need to spend way more political power up there. Um, yeah. We've only 55 days left. So we actually might want to just beeline through... Oh my god, that's so bad. Did you see that? Now it's... Ugh, come on. Bruh. Bruh. Not good, not good. No. Uh, eh. Inflation's just all over the place, my god. This should help with cost a little bit, but... Honestly, it's not very much cost. Basic jet fighters are nice. Realize Kamov's designs! Engineer Nikolai Kamov has designed some of the most impressive aircraft we've ever seen, unfortunately, though. Unrealized because of the complexity. Now that we control our uh, control of Severus Kyrus, time to put those bold plans to fruition and start producing those flying machines. In fact, it's an open we will start assembling Kamov's model of a coaxial rotor utility helicopter, unlike anything our enemies have. This fast mobile transport will give our troops a cutting edge on the battlefield. I want to do that stuff, but we'll see. Yeah, I should have done this all out of order, but whatever. I'm probably going to have to play this off screen anyways, because I don't know if there's any bugs since the update landed. So, especially with this here, like, like, bro, I want to integrate you, but, like, obviously we can't. That's so, so good, y'all. So good. We have a few days left in fighting. Oh, okay. Uh, Central Design Bureau. Yeah. Research of new and improved technologies and designs to implement them for practical use are critical to, to the advancement of our state, but both have a certain risk to them. Left a controlled and undirected, research and design can easily become useless or even counterproductive. To protect against this and ensure efficient, coordinated scientific work, we'll establish a Central Design Bureau, responsible for the oversight of all new practical research, with the design of new technologies and the organization of all scientific efforts. 95, that's good, but doesn't mean we're done yet. It's still anybody's race. Happy Christmas. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Bruh. Central Siberian Federation draws culture to America. Will they spend dollars in no food spheres? If you want to that, please go ahead. <sighs> I hate the They still need to modify that a little bit. Like, well, maybe not. I don't know. But I mean, I guess technically Fenix is probably the one that's leading the most right now. So, like I said, I'll probably replay this off screen anyways. Bruh. Bruh. Why? We're still going to do this one no matter what, hopefully. Russia has at some point had a decently long history with Japan, and much of it isn't good, despite that. Japan remains one of the globe's foremost superpowers. 
uh, and its influence, much like Germany or the U.S., is stretches far and across the globe. It would be foolish of us not to op open diplomatic ties with the sphere and to start working on improving our relations. Besides, history needn't dictate the future. So it happens that our governments and economic setups are rather alike, and cooperation between our two nations could bring about great prosperity. Let's see what we can make happen. Bad words. Just a lot of bad words. But we got to talk about uh, Kamov as well. Soon. Uh, Siberian main battle tank? Or infantry support vehicle designs. Modern warfare requires vehicles that are both capable and reliable. Operating across the vast distances and in the harsh climate of Siberia, we have become all well accustomed to what makes an effective vehicle. Despite that, we remain dependent on foreign or pre-war vehicles for almost all of our needs. Not only are these foreign goods of dubious quality when they arrive here, they are often not suited for the demands we place on them. We will, therefore, design new domestic vehicles specifically for our needs in this demanding environment, and in so doing so, ensure our army's effectiveness and viability. Beautiful. Uncle Vasaya's troops. In the past, uh, had pa uh, time that had passed since Vasily Margulov had begun first inspecting the airborne forces of the Federation. So much had changed right before the General's own eyes. Now the same troops he had seen at first were in shape and had the latest equipment and obeyed every command without question, for a skilled instruction. Some of them had even taken to calling him Uncle Vasya, and just thinking about that almost brought tears to his eyes. They had formed them to find soldiers for whom producing criticism was difficult, but more importantly, a strong sense of camaraderie formed among them, where once they seemed close to apathetic about the rules within the military of the Federation, now they helped each other fulfill their respective eagerness with a sort of eagerness that Margulov hadn't seen in a long, long time. Given time, they stood a real chance of becoming the best soldiers Margulov had ever had the pleasure of working with. For now, however, there was still work to be done, and so he returned to the instructor them, trying to wipe the proud smile off his face and only partially succeeding. If any of his men noticed an admir admiring look in his eyes, he didn't say a word. Uncle Vasya had many nephews. That's a very main battle tank. Oh, what's this? Okay. And a similar vein to the motorized vehicles, our main battle tanks are also a weak point for military. The mass, vast majority of them are either over a decade old at this point, or just scraps of the Japanese or military equipment handed out to some warlords we conquered. It's a state of affairs that can no longer continue. The fact of the matter is, modern warfare is synonymous with armored warfare, and if we find ourselves unable to domestically produce armored fighting vehicles when the time comes to bear arms against Germany, we will lose. Investing a small portion of our budget towards developing sufficient armor technology now is, secured, is securing a future later. The future is now. Uh, yes. Today marks the opening of a newly centralized design bureau, uh, creatively named the Central Design Bureau. Uh, in Akademgorodok, a relatively uh, recently uh, founded a scientific center in the city of Novosibirsk, full of places of immense knowledge and learning as well as great institutes of incredible scientific design, establishing due to the inefficiencies uh, present in the past research efforts. Oh god. Oh god, the game is lagging. Uh, uh, the Central Design Bureau is meant to give scientific study greater organization and coordination under federal oversight, allowing it to truly prosper without necessary overlap, unnecessary overlap, or competition between scientists, problems present in the past under the previous decentralized nature of research in Novosibirsk. Now that it's been open, research and design within the Federation will progress at a much more rapid rate, allowing us to close the technological gap with the rest of the world and even innovate, creating new technologies in various fields ourselves. This is a great victory not only for the Federation, but for all of Russian science. Knowledge is power, my friends. And then innovate on the Kalashnikov. God, I love the AK-47. The Kalashnikov assault rifles become the gold standard for fighting Russia, with each relevant contender for dominance fielding hundreds of Kalashnikov's models for their armies, either as Zatao's originals or local made copies. Despite its effectiveness and popularity, it's not a machine without flaws. Our engineers are promoting a series of improvements to the assault rifle, planning to make it lighter and more reliable with aims to give our mobile troops the edge they need. Proposed Mongolian pipeline. <coughs> Uh, one of Japan's greatest weaknesses has always been natural resources. The ravenous Japanese economy never simply had enough on the home isles to sustain itself. It's a big part of why Japan went to conquer so much of Asia. The war machine simply cannot function without the coal of Manchuria and the oil of Indonesia. Even now, an inefficient sphere still struggles to keep up with the material demands of Japan. Fortunately for us, resources have always been among Russia's greatest strengths. We produce almost everything, and in great amounts as well. We should see if Japan wouldn't be opposed to the construction of a pipeline through Mongolia to facilitate trade materials between our nations. In a bipolar partnership. At last, we've taken the necessary steps towards decisively aligning ourselves with a powerful Pacific government and deepening the association between us, finally creating a partnership uh, with, that, with them certain to stand the test of time. While this decision came with no shortage of controversy from those who had favored to deal with the other power, it is done and there's nothing they can do about it now. There's little reason for them to be better. Either we have reaped great rewards from our improved trade with our chosen partners, and the benefits have been seen by everyone else that matters. But if you'd like to about better agricultural methods, please go ahead. But I think we'll end the episode here, because we've gotten and read through everything here, and I'll probably redo this off-screen. But if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a fat Russian like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, when hopefully we will push forward and try to take out the Far Eastern Soviet Socialist Republic. Thanks for watching. Have a great co-talker rest of your day.